So we all know about the Canadian power trio rush, right? Don't we, Lily? Yes. (laughs) But almost no one talks about Canada's other amazing power trio, Triumph. So on this week's Ludini Rock and Roll Circus podcast, we will tell you the story behind and celebrate the music of this underrated band and answer the question, what the fuck happened to Triumph? Get ready to rock out with your talk out. It's the Ludini Rock and Roll Circus. Moms, dads, boys and girls and children of all persuasions and pronouns. Welcome to the Ludini Rock and Roll Circus. My name is Lou Lombardi, a.k.a. Ludini. I am your host. I am your ringmaster, if you will, for this uh, hour and a half of total, complete, and utter aural, not oral, get your mind out of there. Aural debauchery. Okay. (laughs) Aural, laurel. I like oral better. Oral. Excuse me? Oh, speaking of oral. Oh, boy. Oh, Lord. Speaking of oral. Wow. I'm going to tell you about oral in a minute. Okay. <laughs> but first of all, you are listening to Ludini Rock and Roll Circus. Ludini Rock and Roll Circus dot com. Go there. Lou's got the clap. Exactly. He got <laughs> that clap. Actually, anyway, so, see, don't do that to me. Like, now I'm off. I realize, Lily, you're just taking a you're drink of something. I'm like, damn places. it, I got to time this. You're taking me. I was wondering, like, why is my finger going numb? I have a Band-Aid on. I keep freaking out. <clears throat> I'm not used to having stuff on my fingers. I'm a, I, like, I'm a, you know, as a guitar player, you don't like rings. You know what right, I mean? Like, right, right, right. What's this? Like, yeah, yeah, it's like jiving. It's jiving me nuts. Uh, go. You want to go to LudiniRockandRollCircus.com and uh, check it all out. We have uh, a lot of cool stuff there. You can become part of our inner circle group, and we'll be mixing up with those folks a little bit later on in the podcast. You can find out about that. Let's check out our YouTube ar- archive, which is really hard to find just on YouTube because YouTube hates us because I say words like fuck. So pff, that's like right what? there. Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> so anyways... Um, it's LudiniRockRollCircus.com. You can find all the cool stuff there. Plus, you get access to like exclusive downloads and stuff. Oh, you, you love that. More crap to put on your phone, right, that you don't need. Um, so we'll give you that, too. So check it out. Uh, also, Wolfscustoms.online. Uh, we love Wolf's Customs. Chris Thunderwolf Dotson. Uh, it's great to have you back, brother. I know you were uh, you had to step out, as they say, for a little bit. And it, it happens to everybody. It's, it's all good. Uh, but Chris Thunderwolf Dotson at Wolfscustoms.online. You want to check them out because they do awesome artwork for musical instruments. Very, very cool stuff. I mean, it's, he's really you know innovating things. You definitely want to check them out. Uh, Wolf's Customs or just find them on social media where you can see all the different types of finishes and stuff the guy does. He does a great job. Uh, and RockRageRadio.com um, A lot of you are know about Rock Rage Radio because that's where you listen to us at. <clears throat> you hear us on Rock Rage Radio. Um, but RockRageRadio.com is where you go to download the Rock Rage Radio app. It's more crap for your phone, I know, but it's worth it because it's totally free, right, Lily? It's free. It's free. It's free. It's free. Like that pussy on the corner. Whoa, whoa. It's free. Whoa. Leave that cat alone. <laughs> There's some, um, um, you know, Kyle Bull is, he's the like really spastic uh, metalhead uh, channel. Um, he plays amplifiers. It's the whole thing is like high gain amplifiers. Um, I made it. He I looks sure like Matt Damon. Nope. But he's like a metal guitarist. Matt Damon. <clears throat> and, um, <laughs> but he was demonstrating an amp today and one of the controls on it and I'm, so that's why I'm being a little vulgar today. I got inspired. One of the controls on this amplifier is called the pussy trimmer. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that's nice. what it's called. That just gets right to I the like heart it. of the matter. And, you know, so, you know, every, because he's trying to get, a, he, like, YouTube is his life. That's how he's making his living, you know what I mean? So, like, he's just yeah. trying to, like, not get demonetized and stuff, but he's like, oh, shit, like I said, Pussy trimmer on YouTube. No, I'm fine. <laughs> um, it was fun. You know how you know this guy. We've watched some of his videos before, Kevin. But anyways, um, mm-hmm. but anyways, you want to go to Rock Rage? I don't know how I got to Pussy Trimmer from Rock Rage yeah. Radio. But you want to go to RockRageRadio.com. <sighs> download the free app <laughs> oh, uh, because you hear great music programming 24 seven. I'm sorry, Lily. Did I, did uh, I go too far? No, wow, I don't care. Okay. No, <laughs> never. Please. Does. 
Leo, 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 Leo. Anyway, it's, it is the uh, Ludini Rock and Roll Circus, so we're getting started here. We do, as I've already spoiled it for everybody. If you didn't know, we do have the lovely mm. and talented. I mean, from Rock Rage Radio, yeah. Lily V Six. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> That's good. What's hell? up, all? <laughs> <laughs> wow! I had a great time at the stadium tour. If uh, nobody else went, uh, you missed out. It was a good time. I want to talk about that. Yes, I think yeah. <clears throat> we're gonna get into that. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. 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 Thank Sorry, we stole that from Paul Thank Crane. Uh, Pittsburgh Kevin. Speaking hey. of Pittsburgh stuff. Yeah. You, Pittsburgh, you. Pittsburgh, you did something. I actually did you something. You did something. What? Because I was like, I, I was gonna make. Something. I was yeah. gonna cook the, on the grill, and you're like, where were you? Wait, what were you going to cook? <laughs> now he's upset. I would have come home. Kaba- were, you, were we going to do kibasi again? Children. I, I was hanging out at the playground and I got some... <laughs> you barbecued? Yeah, we barbecued some children. <laughs> children. <Yay. laughs> oh, I like Marilyn Manson I like, do that album. Smells like, like children. No, <laughs> I Lord saw that. I Jesus. That. Barbecue? But anyway, so you did something. Yeah, did I actually did something. I went to uh, Steel City Con. Where he right. was with his fellow nerdery. Nice. Yeah, I actually. Oh, so I'll, I'll tell Every you. Every time this. somebody says that, though, that's what? what I think when they go, they say this con. Still, so they con. You know, con. Uh, I think I'm con. Right? But um, yeah, my nerdery did come out at one point. No right? doubt. Right? Mm-hmm. Because, like, I, I like to think I'm above all those nerds until. Oh. Until I stumbled upon an eagle spaceship model. Do you remember what the eagle, where the eagle's from? I will, t- I will tell you what it's from. Yeah, go ahead. Space 1999. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Nerds! Nerd power! Yeah. Shape of a yeah. waterfall! <laughs> wonder wonder nerd activate. <laughs> Form, you're supposed to say form <laughs> of an octopus. <laughs> I have enough Remember, hands. that's what they would do. Now yeah, it's always waterfall and an eagle. King nerd. Yeah, they would yeah. turn into things, and those two things would kind of work together. Totally, oh, but they were totally man. stupid things. I know they were always. Why not turn I into was, a, I, they were terrible. They I was were. like, every time that came on, I'm like, oh Jesus Christ, come on, can't we get back to somebody cool like Aquaman? You know? Yeah, right, right. But uh, yeah, so I saw this. My daughter and I went, and I saw the eagle, and I'm like, oh my god, you know? I'm like, you can have your Enterprise, you can have your Millennium Falcon. I said, one of my favorite spaceships is that. Did you build one? As, uh, uh, yeah, as of course, I did. I yeah, did. Yeah, build I had a model. One. Yeah. Wow, and I said, we didn't even. Kevin and I, P- Pittsburgh and I, have known each other yeah. for f- like fifty fucking years, and 50 we never knew that. fucking years. And we both built eagles, and I launched into this big tirade about how the original Millennium Falcon, which ended up turning into be the blockade runner, was too close, too close a resemblance to the eagle. So that's why they made the, <laughs> my daughter. God bless her. She just let me go. She just let me. Unlike Lily, so you were the child. I was the child. <laughs> I see. But a very, I was, I was a little upset because we went to see the cast from Dexter. Well, yeah. Yeah, Michael C. Hall canceled, so Dexter wasn't there. Fuck that guy. Right. And yeah, we did. I don't wanna... We did see Jennifer Carpenter, who played his uh, sister Deb on the show. Oh. Did see her at the uh, signing. They were married. Yes, yes, they were. For like ten minutes. And then she didn't show up for the Q and A panel. So we. That's why I divorced. Well, she was drunk. Oh, that's a new oh, one. That's I like good. that. <laughs> oh, you like that? But uh, but other than that, I had a good time. I actually went someplace, did something. I feel like I've contributed to the show. I oh, need a drink. Oh, that's so nice. Yeah. Everybody have a drink. We're gonna take a break. Everybody have a drink. Have a drink, everybody. <clears throat> Are we clinking? Clink. Yeah, we did that. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> clink, clink. Oh, okay. Why does it really clink? It doesn't clink. Well, that's because bottles. it's a shitty fucking white claw. If they were any good, they'd come in bottles. Any fucking white claw. Well, then get me bottles. They don't come in bottles. Well, get me the Jack Daniels in bottles. I'll give you the Jack Daniel, baby. The down home punch. Speaking of Jack Daniels in bottles. Yeah. Oh, boy. I watched, I stumbled upon. Mm Mm-hmm. Excuse me. It's a podcast. And I should just belch. Your belching is just so sad. It could be worse, Lily. I stumbled upon the really? coolest fucking documentary. No, it, not the girl in the picture, which I told, told I you. I was going to say, that was, <clears> that awesome. was heart wrenching. Oh, I, I, ha- I have that. That's amazing. Yeah. But the Charvel gang. 
What? The Charvel Gang. It's all about the early days in San Dimas, California. No. With when Wayne Charvel started out building these guitars. Oh. And he, there's so many awesome fucking stories. And there's like, everybody's in it. Everybody's. Eddie Van Halen would have been in it, but he dead. I'm not dead. in it. He I'm did. not in it. The face of horror isn't in it. Well, I'm not the face of horror <laughs> yet. Yes, you are. Okay. To us, you are. Oh. Where 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 did you see this? Uh, YouTube. Thank you. That's all I needed to know. <laughs> it it's so I'm fucking a note. cool, dude. Like Eddie Van Halen shows up one day and says, um, he's got and he's, he's like so Wayne Charles. He's like, yeah. He says Eddie showed up one day with this like really weird British guy, and he says, this is my friend Alan. Uh, he's from England and he doesn't have a guitar. Hmm. So. So he's, can you make him a guitar? So that red guitar that Alan Holdsworth played on those first like yes. albums of Ted Temple, that's where he got wow. it. He and he's like and he's like oh and uh, he doesn't have a place to live and he needs a place to practice. <laughs> <laughs> so so Wayne was like, well, when Eddie Van Halen brings somebody in and says mm-hmm. they need a place to stay, like <clears throat> give him a place to yeah. stay. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Wow, I will definitely. Be there, there's that. so many great stories like that, and I, Lily, you probably would like it too, just for like the freaking cool like rock story. Oh yeah, like, I'm sure I would guys. like that. <clears throat> it's it's really good stuff. So, anyways, um, I also want to hear about this concert you went to. Yeah. Oh, okay. So <clears throat> Friday in Pittsburgh at PNC Park was the stadium tour, which was Joan Jett, Poison, Def Leppard, and Motley Crue. All right. Mm. I had floor seats. Barely survived it. You can ask to see about that later, too, because we were given all the free alcohol that we ever wanted in the parking lot, like loonies. This is America. Yes, thank you. Praise the Lord Jesus. Um, it was basically just like the best 80s flashback of my life. I've, I've never seen these bands all together in one place. Sissy never saw them at all, so she was uh, very Sissy. excited. Nice. Uh, Joan Jett and Poison, of course, killed it. Um, Motley Crue, eh. mm. hit or miss on a lot of the songs, mm. depending on the song shout at The Devil Sounded Great, but they did buck up the first song uh, lyrically sorry Vince I love uh, you but sorry Def Leppard stole the entire show though uh, fan fantastic uh, flawless wonderful sounded amazing listen listen I'm listening Vin, when when Vince Neil sings here's what I hear that is an accurate that is like I ne- that's how depiction. that's all I ever heard yeah in my life, right? So I don't so, know. So somebody post was go- somebody on Facebook was going the fuck off. I somebody am. who we both personally know. I know who you. I bet you I know who it is. <clears throat> and and then somebody and then he posted a video or somebody posted a video. So I I'm like, okay, I'll watch it. I'm going like it just sounds the way he always sounds. Yeah. Right. So uh, most people haven't heard Vince Neil sound like he did in the '80s. So I don't know why everybody's all up in arms about him sounding the way he yeah. sounded for the last like 20 years. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, it's, like it's just thing. really um like to me it like it wasn't. I, I have seen video clips on YouTube where it was like, dude, like come on. Yeah. You know? yeah, but yeah. like he was like, it, yeah, he was kind of running all the words together yeah. and stuff like that. But As like, he does. but like, just <laughs> it's just you know, and you know, he really. Um, in any case, uh, but there's been all kind of stuff. Like people were calling in to um, different like radio stations and stuff, saying that like the um, this Tommy Lee is like he's playing to a click, which is like. They do that in Nashville. That's a mm-hmm. total like. It, uh, by the way, here's what happens at the Opry. So, you know, for you people that think that like these ca- uh, country cats, you think their shit doesn't fucking stink. They, they play the Opry plays to a click track and has for like decades. And the Opry has auto tune on every fucking microphone. Oh, who does that? <clears throat> so, so here's so you know. So this is a bust your fucking bubble on that. So before you start getting so crazy on these bands that are using a little tech. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, keep that in mind that, like, this is not a new thing. And, like, other genres, you know, especially a genre like country that is supposed to be kind of about, like, acoustic, pure music mm-hmm. and, like, doing shit like that. I think it's like when they started Writer in the Round down there, then I was like, uh, you know, I don't know what the fuck. They're, they're fucked up. Well, regardless of all that, it was a great show and I had a oh blast. Oh, my God, it totally went off. <laughs> I'm so sorry. That's Somebody okay. stopped me. I just did. <laughs> Two, two but it was amazing. But so, anyway, and- so what I was trying to say was, yes, uh, Motley Crue, um, the, the, the clip that I heard to me just... <laughs> I didn't like the way. And- Other live clips I've heard of them, like, yeah. ever, you know. Yeah. So I don't, I don't know. It just... It was too much fun. I didn't care. There you go. <laughs> so, um, I thought the, the backup singers were amazing. They were super hot. Yeah, they were insanely hot. <laughs> I they think were- Tommy's actually 
married to one of them? Oh, boy. I'm pretty sure. Oh, my God. Either married or dating them. It's a miracle she can walk. Banging. Banging. We'll it's go with that. It's a miracle she can walk. After he uh, showed his ween that, that morning his on, on yeah, Facebook. Have you, what, 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 he have you seen Facebook? my wiener? It was on Facebook and Twitter. I happened to see it on Twitter because, no, it was Thursday morning because I was posting about my show. And um, first thing that comes up, I'm like, oh, okay. He <laughs> showed his wiener. Yeah, Why? I, I what was the context? It? Just to remind it. people, he's out there. Yeah, probably. But was like, was there like? Well, was... I'm gonna find the picture because I screenshot. Oh, was it like oh, an accident? Lord. Like, like no, there was, was no accident. <laughs> it's though. not an accident. He's like, he's like, so, I'm really trying like, to leave. It's really like. Remember no, me? No, I'll show it to you. You can just look at it. It's fine. It'd be fucking this funny is... if he was like jerking. Oh, uh, this is all it was. Oh my god! I know, right? So was, done, thank you. I could have done without that. I know oh. it wasn't an accident, but I screenshotted it because now it's all down. Now I have a photo of it. So anybody wants see? to see it, I have it. So. There you go. <laughs> I sent it to Sissy. That's great. <laughs> Jesus Christ! I, said, I feel Oops. like I was violated this morning on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, what the fuck is going on with you? I know. A lot of people here's are like, the, oh, you needed the, to make sales. Problem. Here's the issue, though. Here's the issue, and we're gonna, this is going to come up when we talk about Triumph. Um, like, do you have so much access to these people? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? There was a time when, like, like a photo like that would be like hidden, and yeah. then someday mm -hmm. and you'll like, see it. Yeah. it. It would like it would surface leak. somewhere. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, some journalist T and TMZ would find it or something. Yeah. You know? <clears throat> but like now, everything is everywhere immediately. Mm -hmm. So we don't have any of that kind of like mystery. <laughs> a couple of people are like, I, I get yeah. in Facebook jail for saying dumb shit, and then Tommy Lee can post his junk everywhere, and it's fine. A Angelina <laughs> said that she was in, she's in Facebook jail. She might be. I don't know what she, I don't know. Well, they get you for anything these days. Oh doesn't my. matter. You can breathe wrong. You're in Facebook jail. So uh, just jail. They should just call it jail book. <laughs> jail book. <laughs> nice. Jail book. Nice. I think I might have started a new thing. Oh Somebody boy. make that meme with the blue, with the blue black background and the white lettering. <laughs> jail book. I'll change my p Facebook profile picture to that. There you go. Um, <laughs> jail book. So, <laughs> but that's cool. That's cool. But anyway, it's, so it's we all fun. saw and experienced some cool something. shit, you know, this cool. weekend. Um, yes. So now, oh. now the moment you've all been waiting for, the meat right? And the potatoes. Are you guys ready? Hold on, here it comes. <laughs> did you that ever, was so sad. Did you hear really Bob sad. Schimmel talk about that? About like sex, like at fifty, like no. He's like, he's like, What's yeah, he's like? just. Oh, I won't do it. All right, but you should find it. No, he did on, on the church show. It was like I was crying. His laugh. Rick so Emmett is sitting by his radio. Radio. How old am I? <laughs> waiting for our show. He's waiting for us to start. So anyway, What's so we're going to talk about this. He's like band. cocky duty. Come on, guys. Oh boy, I, I know. know He's not a, he does so not swear. Did you find? Did you see the documentary on YouTube? It's like a. It's from like Canadian TV from 2001. Yeah. Okay, good. So we we can amuse Lily right, right. tonight because I was like oh, hoping God. not everybody watched it so we could. You could go. You could make some comments, but um, wonderful. Yeah. So, but, so there's some funny shit on that. But go ahead. We're gonna start as we always do with Lily. All right. I'm gonna shut the fuck. I'll just I don't, do some. Wrong with me? I can't stop talking. <laughs> he loves the talk. You need to calm down and stop doing coke for first of all. So there's that. And, or share it. So coke. the rest of us can be up there with coke you. Classic. Anyway, Canadian hard rock band formed in '75 was popular in the '70s and '80s, building on its reputation and success as a live band. They have 16 albums and DVDs, received 18 gold and 9 platinum awards in Canada and the United States, nominated for multiple Juno awards. If you don't know what that is, it's a Canadian award. Juno? Juno. Did you know, know what that was? Juno. <laughs> <laughs> Including the group of the year awards. 16 albums. Sorry. I couldn't resist. <laughs> wow. Like, part of me said, don't do that. Don't interrupt Lily. And you did no. it anyway. Don't ever listen said, to that like, voice. It'll be kind of it. funny. It's if okay. You say when I bite you, you'll stop doing it. <laughs> <laughs> Most known for its guitar-driven rock songs, songs such as Lay It on the Line, Magic Power, Fight the Good Fight, and World of Fantasy. Mm -hmm. Although it originally earned notice for strong cover songs like Rocky Mountain Way, which I did not mm, know until that's recently. Right. The band was formed in Toronto and for much of its existence featured Rick Emmett, Mike Levine, and Gilmore. Hence the trio. Um, I love that <clears> name, too. Which one? Gilmore. Oh, Gil Gilmore. <laughs> not Gilmore. Gilmore. He's Gilmore. one of the Gilmore girls. <laughs> More recently, <laughs> uh, in 2007, Triumph was inducted into the Canadian Music Industry Hall of Fame oh, in a yeah. ceremony at Toronto's Fairmont Royal York Hotel. UDA. All, yes, all members of the classic group lineup uh, were pre present for the event. Although there were no plans for Triumph reunion and Moore had taken on a full-time career at Metalworks, the band members didn't rule out future collaborations. 
Um, on in in 2008, they were inducted in the Canadian Music Hall of Fame. 2008, the uh, lineup performed for the first time since '88 did two reunion concerts. 2011, the band reissued Allied Forces as a vinyl package mm. for their 30th anniversary. I'm starting to feel a little old. <coughs> 2011, Triumph Lane uh, in Mississauga, Ontario, was officially dedicated in honor of the band. Oh. Mississauga. I'm sorry, I said that wrong. Um, 2012, the band released a CD DVD package on their June 7, 2008 reunion. I did say package, <laughs> and I knew you were going to do that. 2013, Triumph was inducted into Legends Row in Mississauga City Hall. Oh boy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 2019, they were named Legends of Live at the 2019 Live Music Industry Awards at Canadian Music Week. <laughs> September 10th, 2021. <laughs> Get rid of the clown. Just Triumph Rock and Roll Machine documentary debuted at the Toronto International Film Festival. Uh, <laughs> yes, but it is not anywhere else. They I debuted, know. I know. And I can't fucking find it. I need it, to see I it. I want to watch it for this fucking Come on now. <clears throat> Goddamn Jeez. podcast is fucking going to kill me. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> Simmer down now, Luke. Simmer down. Simmer down. Simmer down. Now. Simmer down. No. Um, okay, so I need a mirror. <laughs> so these guys, um, I heard an interview with them on the Westwood One, like or the Westwood it was Westwood One or like King Biscuit Flower Hour. Mm-hmm. Remember when DVE would play that? Like, yep. would come on like Sunday night, you know, like at midnight, <clears throat> and they would have interviews with bands, and you it would make you want to stay up late, and you'd be you'd be really tired from Mrs. Sievert's English class in the morning. <laughs> Mrs. Sievert. Um, so. But I heard Triumph because I loved Triumph. They grabbed me immediately. Like the second I heard them, and the second I, especially when I saw this thing, the cover of um, the, uh, the uh, just a game. But in any case, um, they were interviewed on there, and they said, if I remember, now I was, <laughs> I was like in eighth grade or something, you know. So like, and I'm 55 now, so memory, right? That mm-hmm. basically they had taken their student grants <laughs> and bought a whole bunch of fucking like PA and like here. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and Gil Moore was actually a, like a sound tech in uh, where, where, Tr- Toronto. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He was a sound tech. So like people were coming and renting gear off of him and he was going out and doing sound for bands and stuff like that. So he was, that was kind of like, he had like a little business going on. Um, and uh, Mike Levine worked with him. And Mike's thing now, and what's just really interesting about Triumph is like everybody in the band had a job. Um, mm-hmm. um, <clears throat> Gil was like the techie guy. He loved the production, so he would. Uh, we still alive. He loves the production. He loves the you know all the sound and the lights and the you know designing all that. And they would constantly be tweaking. He was always working on it. And um, Mike, it was the guy who really liked marketing and promotions. And Rick was, they were all like, yeah, Rick, go write us some songs. Um, but they would all contribute. Um, if you look at most of their songs, like it's a group, it is a group effort. And mm-hmm. some of them wrote their own songs too. <clears throat> but it, it, you know, it kind of sort of Rick, Rick Emmett sort of des- describes it that way. Um, and um, he just, you know, so that this is where some of the tension eventually ended up coming in. But anyway, so we don't want to go, we don't get there just yet. But each each of them were sort of like their own thing. Rick, mm-hmm. And Rick, it, what I think a lot of people don't realize about Rick is like, he's an insanely amazing musician. Like, accomplished jazz guitarist, accomplished classical guitarist. Like, really good. Not like he can play a song. Like, right. like, he, ha- like he's, he has albums of this shit. Um, great flamenco guitarist, like really, really good um, musician. I played one of his pieces uh, to get into music school, and uh, I was telling Kevin before I started, like I started, they, they stopped me, like that's not a classical piece, you have to stop. Um, <laughs> but I'm like, but it's by Rick Emmett, and he's fucking awesome. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> me. Um, <laughs> but no, 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 so... So, I mean, th- these are guys are like, you know, so, so Rick is this great, amazing musician. I think a lot of people don't realize. I think he's a kind of unsung guitar hero. Um, and I always scratch my fucking head at that because he's like fucking great. I mean, he's really fucking good. He's not like just playing Jimmy Page licks or Jimi Hendrix licks. So he's got his like, he's totally his own thing doing. He's got this like. Really cool. He's got great, like, what because he plays classic. He's got great finger style. He's able to kind of integrate that in with the rock stuff. 
It's really crazy. Like, you know, you know, and he's just not doesn't he he's not said in the same breath with like, you know, other amazing guitar uh-huh. players of that like era. Like, you don't hear his name along with Van Halen or Warren D Martini or George Lynch right. or any of those guys. Like, right. but he's like mocking, you know, or or he's even um great. Uh, what was his name? Had the band Blue Murder. What was his name? John Sykes. Oh, you know, or John Sykes questions. or Adrian Vandenberg. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was a Canadian mm-hmm. guy. <clears throat> um, you know, he's just kind of like, um, it's unfortunate. I don't, I don't understand that. So maybe somebody could enlighten me on that. But uh, yeah, may, just the really amazing, he raised amazing musicianship. Um, now the comparison, now where do we want to start, Kevin? Do we want to talk about the comparisons to Rush? Or we, what do we can. Want to do? We can. We, can, we, we have can, to talk about this. We, let's just I, this, get it out of the way. This, so is the, Lily... yeah, this is the elephant in the room. Please just do it. This is the elephant. Because what, what I'm going to tell you guys yeah. is, is going to, uh, some of you is going to blow some of your minds. Blow right your through my face. Mind. Right through your face. But do you want to say anything about that, Kevin? <clears throat> well, they were asked constantly because Rush came out before they did. And they were asked constantly, like, are you the new Rush or. Are you in competition with Rush? And and the guys in Triumph are like, look, we're we're from Toronto, we're from Canada, we're a three piece band, but that's about it. I mean, they play a completely different style of music than we do. They're you know the progressive rock. We're more hard rock. Um, but they were not upset about that. They're like, hey, at least people are talking about us. You know, that's um, um, I mean, and Mike like Mike Levine said that they were fans. Yeah, Rush. they did like Rush. They were like, and they said they felt like Rush, like kind of, op- kind of opened the door, like paved, paved the way, way. Yeah. paved the way. Paved yeah, the Rush way. had big coattails, and they were happy to ride. Yeah, that's what he said. That's <laughs> what, that was the exact line. Yeah. Um, but, but okay, so there Ooh. are. I thought this goddamn thing was silence. I it's not silence. I thought it's I'm loud going, as I'm hell. Going, I'm going like, My Lily. ears are bleeding. Like, I know you ain't yelling at me. I thought it was your phone the whole time. Mm-hmm. I'm like, what's that? Turn the phone down. Are you and serious? I didn't realize it's it was me. You, I, Lou. I, just, I wasn't yelling. It's always at been you, you Lou. Okay. Face of horror, everybody. You've There's always the been that, the catch. Isn't that the face of horror? You. There you go. Um, but um, so there are people that um. Confuse these two bands, believe it or not. What? Not, not me. Oh, hold on. It's not, it's not Lily. <laughs> Simmer down now. now. But you think about, think about, think about this, okay? Okay. You've got yep. the guitar player yep. and the bass player standing on the same sides of the stage. That right. Get, if it, it a passing glance, not if you stood them side by side, but if you looked at one and then twenty minutes later looked at the other one, you could confuse. Alex Lifeson and Rick Emmett sure. at that in that era. You absolutely could. You yes. without knowing you're a casual music fan. You Lily, you don't understand. You grew up with MTV and shit like that. We didn't know what these people looked like half the time. Right. There's a little teeny tiny. MTV came out in eighty one when I was born, by the right. way. Right. Exactly. <laughs> so you grew up being able you're to see rock stars sister. like a lot more than we did. Like they were there was a I told you my sister and I thought Bob Seeger was fucking black. Well he is. <laughs> He just has that skin disease that Michael Jackson has. And I'm done. All Where right, everybody. It's been a great podcast. Thank you, everybody. I really can't continue Thank after you. that. That's it. I think we're wow. done. You just broke it. Wow. wow. That's the end of the podcast. You're welcome. Uh, and, it, and, and, then you, and then Mike, who, uh, he doesn't look, he doesn't sing or anything, but he plays keyboards and yeah. bass. And he has like kind of the long hair and he's, he's got, got like the, the kind hair. of Getty, yeah. Lu- no, Getty Lee kind of nose sure, going on. Sure. People who aren't like, who are kind of just like casual kind of music fans could mix up. And I've had, I've been in the car with people and Hold On would start. And, and I've had people go, Rush? I'm just fucking trying. And I they're literally like, I'm sorry, just got I can't, goosebumps over that, but go on. I can't, you know, I mean, but I've had, and not more, not just once either. Hmm. And not just girlfriends. Like, I was going to say. Guy friends. Boyfriends. Yeah. Boyfriends. <laughs> Gentlemen lovers. <laughs> Gentlemen lovers. Royce and Bruce. <laughs> Royce and Bruce. Lou, Royce. is this Rush? <laughs> oh my God, so, I'm going home. <laughs> <laughs> I was off the rails at this point. I apologize. <laughs> Lord Jesus. But but people did that. So um, I think that Triumph, one of their issues, kind of like God of the Gate, is this kind of identity problem. You know, because people are going, people are just because people are people and people are simple and they just see and they just. So I think that this was a kind of a little bit of a thing for them. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, 
more on that later. So these guys put out a couple of records in Canada, right, Lily? Mm-hmm. That like were just Canadian releases at first. Now everything is on the internet. But, you can right. find it everywhere. Yeah, but go ahead. <laughs> we want to talk about that for a minute. I, I do. You want me to talk about the actual albums? One, two, three. Four, well, six, well, six, yeah. You can just kind of me- kind of mention them. Do you um, have that or there's ten studio albums. Um, obviously, Just a Game is the one with Lay It on the Line, which everybody I would think knows at this point, and which we happen mm-hmm. to have a beautiful. <laughs> I have that. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Ooh, uh, sadly, it a... does not have the the the, the fold. What is it called? The gatefold. The gate. Oh, I am not that special to have that album, well, you're special, but I found right. that one for fifty cents. Um, that's I, I really cent. don't have anything on the actual album itself. I apologize. Well, <clears throat> a couple of things. But you um, did, said you did. A couple of things. So, so I was not even into music yet. I was just you know, and me and his name was Michael Scovrin. Uh, we were we decided to do a science fair project together. And I was, we were like in sixth grade. So we were really fucking young. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And um, he's like, well, you know, have your mom bring you over on Saturday and we'll do the science project. You know, so whenever there and like his parents were super fucking cool and like they would always have snacks and stuff for us. And we were like, <laughs> in front of you? Kool-Aid all. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> what? I know what you mean. Anyways. What um, <laughs> no doobie snacks. So, so. He so he so we're gonna get do the science project. And first, the, what he does is he puts on an album. Okay. I'm like I didn't know anybody that had rock albums. I was like, <laughs> wow. super super excited. I was like, yeah, I was like, I was like really fascinated. I'm like, this is I'm like I don't know if my parents would approve this, but this is like really cool. <laughs> mm. Parents are super religious, uh, but anyways, so he put on the first album that he put on was. Sticks Grand Illusion. And I was just like, oh my God. I just was like totally enthralled. And then he says, well, if you like that, he says, I have this album by Triumph. And he put on Just a Game. Mm-hmm. And like, Try was instantly a Triumph fan. I was it's, I was a Sticks fan and a Triumph fan. I didn't even know who they were. <laughs> <clears throat> um, but it was because it was just like, wow. Like, he, I was like, and this kid, like, like Mike was really, uh, really smart. He was like the smartest kid in the class, but he's kind of like nerdy. So like, you know, of course. I mean? So, mm-hmm. but like for him to have rock albums, I was like, fuck, dude, you, you're like pretty fucking. Well, cool. nerds do have rock albums. It's a thing. Uh-huh. It was really cool. So I dated so, so many nerds. So, um, <laughs> but I mean, I didn't know that it, it ten, you know what I mean? I was right. a little kid. You don't know what the fuck to know. I don't know what the I knew. I didn't know cool shit like you, Lily. Well, yeah. you know. You've always been cool, Lily. It came out cool. You've always been cool. I kind of doubt that, but okay. she, she popped right out. And, we'll ask my mom about like, that. You know, here I am. <laughs> if I had a leather diaper, I don't know. We'll no <laughs> breaking the law, breaking the law, breaking the law. Nice. Lily well, comes out with a beer in one hand, a cigarette in the other. <laughs> <laughs> Where's the party? Wow. <laughs> Wowzy. You know? Wow. Wow. <laughs> no. She came out and said, the party's here. Oh, so <laughs> I have arrived. <laughs> On the scene. But um, so that was my, but they do have, they did do these records in um, in Canada, which are really, which are really cool and got, eventually got released. But Rock and Roll Machine is a very cool record. Um, and those of us that know Triumph from the Just a Game album moving forward kind of wouldn't recognize right. um, when that what they were doing because it's like boogie rock it's like mm-hmm. not what you um like would expect and so they started out well okay mike and um gill right kevin they were like hanging out together they were friends right. and they had played in different bands together mm-hmm, right mm-hmm. and um they were looking for somebody they had done other things but it was nothing was special like nothing really like you know it was like kind of cool click, yeah. yeah it didn't really click and they got then rick came along and um, they said, you know, we want you to front the band. They was like, he, they jammed with him. They could tell he was really good. And um, <clears throat> they started out because the because the because the vocals that they could do. Him and Gil have amazing voices. Oh, man. Um, yeah. Doing, they would do like long Led Zeppelin medleys, and they did. Nice. They were really also Deep Purple. They were into Led Zeppelin and Deep Purple. Those were like their favorite bands. And. Um, uh, Rick is really um, talks about how like Jimmy Page is like his hero, um, but um, there's I was listening to I was uh, listening to fight the good fight today, and um, there's actually it's 
kind of the outro to Stairway to Heaven. Okay. Okay. Yep. Yep. It's got that total thing. And then when he plays a solo, he actually references the solo to Stairway to Heaven, where he does that. Uh, and yeah, he yeah, does yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? But it's like a, it's not like he's doing it because he knows, he, you know what I mean? It's a wink, wink, nudge, nudge thing. Right. Right, right. It's right, not right. like, you know, oh, check it out. I'm great. You know? Um, <laughs> It's like it's like an homage. It's an homage. Um, homage. But yeah, they were um, heavily into Led Zeppelin, <clears throat> and uh, like like Rush was too. That's mm-hmm. just another mm-hmm. kind of comparison. Yeah, yeah. And if you look, you listen to like Rush's first album, and you listen to the early records of Triumph, they do sound way more similar. They're both playing that kind of like boogie rock, boogie like ro- you yeah, know, yeah. Led Zeppelin kind of thing going on. So definitely, <clears throat> but. Um, Let's talk about the 1970s. Okay. This I, is I right from there. the course's mouth. Some of us were there. <laughs> um, Triumph, for, as Lily was saying, 75, after a chance meeting, uh, led Emmett, Levine, and more to embark on a marathon jam session. They immediately decided to form a band, and the debut Triumph, was the name, was released in 76 on Attic Records. Mm. Triumph's gift for delicate, intricate, Play, uh, pieces and blistering rave ups was evident from the first album. Blinding Light Show and Street Fighter are full born rockers. Yeah. The yeah. second album, Rock and Roll Machine, followed in 77. The title track is a standout due in large part to Emmett's light speed guitar solo. There is a oh. part of the song. <clears throat> now, this is before Eddie Van Halen did Eruption. Uh-huh. But there's a part of the song where like the band just stops and he goes and he off. He just goes off. The yeah, song's yeah, like yeah. six yeah. minutes. <laughs> um, and uh, title track uh, uh, also included are a cover of Joe Walsh's Rocky yeah, Mountain it's Way. Really good. Uh, it is. And, the, and then they have a song that's two parts uh, called uh, New York City Streets. Um, but yeah, they do Rocky Mountain Way. Now, Rocky, I did know that they did Rocky Mountain Way. I did not know where it came from. I, did, you know, I thought maybe it was like some, and it turns out it was. It was something that was released in Canada. But I did occasionally DVE would play it on like the deep cuts Ooh. or lost tracks kind of you know weekend you know. And I did hear it, and I was going. I remember hearing it going. That's not Joe Walsh, right? Right. And they <laughs> then they back now. It's Michelle or somebody back and said it was, it was Triumph. Um, so, but anyway, anyways, uh, New York City streets and the adventurous epic medley, uh, the city are on that record. Triumph's initial popularity developed in an unusual way. Both Triumph and Rock and Roll Machine were first released only in Canada and garnered significant airplay in the in Texas. Mm-hmm. Texas of all yep. places. San yeah. Antonio. T for Texas, yeah. T for Tennessee. But anyways, <laughs> uh, has always been a prime a United States market for hard rock and fans responded so favorably that Triumph specifically undertook a Texas tour to promote Rock and Roll Machine. So they just got a tour one state, but God bless them. Like yep. they took the, they took it they took it where they can take it. Yep. <laughs> you they know knew. what I mean? Like took the opportunity. And 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 that's the one thing when you listen to them interviewed and talk, they all have this kind of like humble attitude. Like, mm-hmm. okay, this is where people wanted us, so we just so we went, went there. there. Well, they filled in for Sammy Hagar. Yes, yeah, that's yeah, what Sammy happened. Was yeah, sick or something, story? Yeah. Um, I only have uh, so they try and cut a big break in the United States in '78. The band filled in for Sammy Hagar at a radio station promotion gig in San Antonio, and uh, followed the show up with a five with five more dates around the state. And uh, yeah, so they're huge in San Antonio because that's where they got to have their big yeah, break in the U.S. Nice. So, yeah. Um, in 79, the album Just a Game is, came out. It was Commercial Breakthrough. So this was an album. Uh, in, what I believe happened was, and I don't know if it's mentioned here, is that I think Attic found distribution in the United States. Uh, see, guys, what you don't understand. See, this is what people don't understand. Like, <laughs> if the album wasn't distribu- dis- distributed. There you go. Not distributed. There are YouTubers distributed. distributed. Did, does it annoy distributed. you? Oh, my gosh. <clears throat> uh, if this not distributed in your country... You don't get it. Yes. That's it. There was no like nothing. That was just it. You it was had hard to, times. Yeah. 
<laughs> but it also made like a market for like rarities and imports. Mm-hmm. Remember, there were people yes. like, oh, and yeah. I thought it happened a little bit later on. That that's sort of like that's really more of a kind of a mid to late eighties phenomenon. Going to the record store and finding rare yeah. stuff and imports. Uh-huh. And all, like, oh, this is a, this is the one where they made a mistake and the cover was wrong and they recalled it. Like right. all kind of cool shit like that. I'm one of those weird people. Yeah. That so that like you people, you 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 people, <laughs> um, mili- you know, a lot of millennials. Sorry, Lily, it's but okay. Lily's not I'm, one of those. I'm the beginning but, of one. So. But um, <laughs> you know, and and Zier's just like just can't appreciate that kind of thing. But um, anyway, so Jan- just a game comes out, big commercial breakthroughs. It was finally dis- uh, distributed in the United States, and Hold On was a top forty single. Uh, and so it was laid on the line. Um, so this was like now the you know. This is what really got broke them on U.S. rock radio. And that was the thing in that era. Like, the Beatles wanted to come to the fucking United States. They knew they weren't going to do shit if they couldn't make it in the United States. And, like, that was with every band. Like, if you see any behind the music with any bands from other countries... They all say the same. Rush says that on their mm-hmm. their yep. DVD. Like we were, well, how do we break into the United States? <clears throat> so the United States was fucking ground fucking zero for yeah. rock and roll, baby. Yeah, as it should be. Indeed, <laughs> we was ground zero for rock and roll. And mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. you can quote me on that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll post it on Facebook later. There you go. But um, anyways, um, <laughs> so so you had to do that. You had to you had to have a break breakthrough here in the U.S. So that worked out. The, the you know the Texas thing, and then they were able to get uh, distribution in the U.S. and boom. And it's it, yeah, it's at the yeah, it's mm-hmm. at the end of the seventies. So in seventy nine, the first Van Halen album has already come out. Yes. Mm-hmm. 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 Okay. So mm-hmm. people people are you know so music is like you know. It's like changing, you know what I mean? It's getting harder and heavier and yeah, harder more and heavier, intense. Baby. So what do you want to move on from there? You want to talk about the 80s a little I bit have or? none of that. What? <laughs> Sorry. We knew you knew all about the 80s. Dude. The big 80s yeah. on VH1. <laughs> you see, kids, there was this uh, television channel called VH1. And, uh, Next up was the 1980s Progressions of Power and the single I Can Survive, the sizzling anthem I Live for the Weekend, and the big hit in the United Kingdom uh, in the, in the, and in the U.S. 81 saw a triumph explode into the mainstream with allied forces. So this is, so they're just cranking them out. They're just cranking these albums out. Immediately went to gold and eventually platinum. The album became a critical and commercial smash. Mm-hmm. A smash. It was a smash hit. All the smash hits all the time. Uh, reaching number 23 on the uh, Billboard charts, its standout song, Magic Power, was a hit single and Fight the Good Fight was another fan favorite. Both songs are still staples on rock stations. I hear Fight the Good Fight all the time. Yes. <laughs> all the time. I love it, but I do hear it all the time. Amazing stuff. Uh, 80s, uh, in 1986, The Sport of Kings marked a career high point with the infectious Somebody's Out There. This is a really one of those <clears throat> rah rah mm-hmm. kind of songs. Um, I was listening to this um, and thinking that, like, if you t- took out the super crunchy guitars, put more acoustic guitars in it. Put a little fiddle and a little bit of lap steel, uh, pedal steel, and maybe uh, like some kind of like um, mandolin or something like Just that. It could be song. like a Rats, Rascal Flats. Okay, I get. I can it has see that, that yeah. kind of like it's got all those. I mean. Like it's insane with the chord changes. I mean, it's just like every like there's a chord change on it on every down on, not every downbeat, but like um, on like like on two and four or one and three, like on every measure. It's really crazy in different spots. But um, <clears throat> but anyway, somebody's out there reached number twenty seven. Major hit single, just one night was a top ten smash on MTV's video chart. The muscular tears in the rain also thrilled the triumph faithful. <laughs> the sport of kings was produced by Mike Clink. Who followed this project with Guns N' Roses' Appetite for Destruction? So we just talked so about lucky Guns him. N' Roses last week. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Due in part to his work with Triumph. Surveillance hit the streets in 87 with this album. Triumph uh, broadened its studio approach by adding guest guitar Steve Morse, formerly the Dixie Dregs and a member of Kansas at the time, who dueled with Emmett on Headed for Nowhere. Did He's you breaking spill stuff. Your beer? Sorry about that. He threw his phone. Oh, well then, as long as not your beer. Anger. No, no, no. I have respect for that. 
Triumph and RCA parted ways and the band signed with MCA. All the CAs. All the CAs. Can't for Canada, right? Mm -hmm. uh, Thunder 7. This is a really big album, like in my memory of this band. It was released in 84. Triumph co produced Thunder 7 with legendary producer Eddie fucking Kramer, who worked with like everybody. Yeah. I have something about that album, if, if you want me to read that at all. Sure. Um, that was in 84. The It was uh, their concept album. The record came out on the new CD format even though most people couldn't afford CD players at the time. And the album's cover features a mechanized version of Leonardo da Vinci's Vitruvian Man, which I love. It's um, a great cover. But again, yeah. but again, it's got naked guys all hanging out on the, just like Rush. Sorry. I, know, I, like I can see oh. where people would like yeah. get shit confused. Go ahead. Illustrator Dean Motter. Just wanted to throw that out there because I love the artwork. <laughs> yeah, well, that's the thing that we, we're going to, we should take a minute and talk about Triumph's artwork, right? Because they do have interesting album covers. Um, I, I wish I had that. And uh, just a game. No. I was Rick. Now I'm not that because I'm smart, but I heard Rick <laughs> Emmett say this, and then I think I thought that I remembered somebody telling me this before. But but the cover of Just a Game, all the crazy like, um, it's got this. Um, you just have to go see the cover. Go Google it real quick. Um, we'll wait. But all the stuff on the cover is all the different pieces are references to all the songs. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it's not just like it looks kind of like it's not just of, randomness or random or just be <laughs> like oh let's do something cool like it all it kind of all goes for something it's really right. neat <clears throat> but uh, yes that um, cover of Thunder Seven was really striking and uh, you know and and it's not and it's a uh, um, it smells like an old record nice. it smells oh, like an old record it's one excuse smell. me I'm kind of I apologize um, it was a feature of music at that time. Right, guys? You know, you would mm -hmm. get the album and you would, we've said this many times, you'd lay on your bed and listen to the album. And look at the and album. Look at the the cover. Album. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, oh, yeah. Because totally the art thing. took you into the experience. Even yeah. if it was just a picture of the band. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. you know, really the good ones would take you into like an experience. Um, so Thunder 7. Okay. So uh, Thunder 7. All right. Go ahead. No, I'm sorry, Kevin. Go ahead. The, 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 Cal the, the Calvin. Jeez. The album cover or the Calvin. Um, Calvin Klein. Always kind of reminded me of the artwork from like Alien. What was the guy's name? Geiger. H.R. Giger. Giger. Yeah. 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 That's what they were trying. That, and I kind of wondered were... if like he had done it. No. But it's very. He had done it. <laughs> it's very Giger esque. The, the illustration was done by Dean Motter. Dean he, Motter. Yes, but he might have been a fan. A fan of it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But that, like you said, the, 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 the covers of the albums, like, oh, I got to get this. The album became another gold seller with popular single Follow Your Heart and another highlight Spellbound. The tour was arguably Triumph's most awe-inspiring yeah. as it was sold-out trek that showed once and for all that the group was one of the few arena headlining acts that truly pushed intricate lighting and lasers to the mask. Mask. To the max. Mask, to the max. I'm trying so hard. I know. Uh, you're doing okay. After a decade doing together okay. as one of the most popular live acts. So I don't want to talk about that. We're going to get to that in a minute. <clears throat> um, so let's stop at the moment here. Um, they did something that, like, to me seems insanely impractical. They took all their production, including the PA system, with them. Oh. That's a lot, right? That's yeah. a lot of shit. gear. Yeah. Uh, so wait a minute. Hold on now. It's a lot of gasoline. Yeah. That's not one truck. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, it's like an army of freaking semis coming coming into your town. Uh, you know, a lot of, you know, so then there's maintenance on all that shit. Then think about the fucking mouths they have to feed. Right. Sandwiches. Yep. I mean, they <laughs> really have to like. Here's your Kit Kat for the day. They really have to. Um, I mean, it has to be freaking expensive. Now, in the set, that era, it was not nearly, even if you adjust for inflation, not nearly as expensive as something like that. It would be, that would just be, like, no band would do that today. Right. No, you, you can't. Would not. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> today, you can sh show up with your laptop and your whole lighting thing is pre-programmed <laughs> and you just plug it in and it'll, and whatever system will do it. But in any case, um, they hauled all this shit around, and the th and the thinking. And Gilmore said that like we get to keep that fee, like when right. they when they we, they would have to hire out for that. So apparently they had done the math enough to know that like, okay, it's actually w worth it 
mm-hmm. for us this to <clears throat> to do it this way. So that shows you that like costs and everything were very very different. The economics of the 1970s and 80s were very different than uh, that, than the 2022s. No doubt. <laughs> so so I mean that's just no band would think of doing that. Like when I heard right. him say that come out of his mouth, I'm like. I thought he was fucking the, your I own thought, lights. I thought like he was the biggest idiot I'd ever seen. No, because like who in the fuck would do that? But I'm then I'm thinking 2022. I'm right. not right. thinking right. 19 the 70s and 80s. You know, I'm not thinking mm-hmm. I'm early, especially early 70s and 80s. So um, it was it was a different scene <laughs> uh, back uh, back then. Uh, after a decade t- together as one of the most popular live acts of the time, the long overdue double live album, Stages, mm. was issued in 85. The songs were recorded on the road between 81 and 85. Um, so, the band has, uh, you know, they, they seem, like it all seems good. And there's this great documentary, it's on YouTube, I think it's called The Story of Triumph. Yeah. And it's yeah. like in five or six parts. Mm-hmm. And it's, I think it's just like something from Canadian TV. Yeah. You know, yeah. they're all interviewed and um, it's, a, you know, and it was filmed in 2001. Yes, yeah, so it's pretty old. It's pretty, it's pretty old. It's, int- it's but it's a time capsule of kind of like yeah, where yeah, the heads exactly. were at the time. But I want to talk about <clears throat> their tours for a minute because th- this, do you want to tell the story? Or do you want me to tell the story? Which Bon one? Scott? I, I don't. No, you tell it. It's, it yeah. So <laughs> they toured with ACDC <laughs> and ACDC were opening for them. What? Check yes. that shit out, right? ACDC Nuh-uh. was the yes. opening act. Yes. Yes, way, Ted. And he said that Rick said, now, now in this series, like we're going to, we should probably mention this too. In this short part of the series from Canadian TV, like Rick is the most <laughs> polite spoken. Right. Like says everything in the absolute nicest way possible. Like <laughs> never swears. Like kind of goes like there's a places where you could like a Definitely. swear would be totally appropriate. Yeah. It wouldn't sound like you were being like me being gratuitous <laughs> with it. Um, you would Definitely. sound it would be it was like with normal speech and he would like do all kind of gymnastics not to say Around swear. It. Yeah, you know what I mean. Um, you know, like well. H E double toothpicks, you know. Like, he didn't even uh, say that. <laughs> no, he wouldn't. That's say that's it. how polite he was. Yeah, he, he wasn't even, even, even going to spell it. Yeah, yeah. So, um, but so so he's this very unassuming guy. In fact, in this documentary, you guys should watch it because you. That's really. They're good. all chilled. In fact, yeah. and they, again, they remind me of Rush. I'm sorry. Yeah. Because they're all like super oh, chill. Those, like, yeah. That's Canadians. Those Canadians. Good, they're just nice. You know, oh, whatever. Sure, yeah, we're no. fine. <laughs> and um, they, did, they did make a real effort to not party the way like they saw yeah. a lot of other bands. They were like, well, we want to have some fun, but we got to, we don't want to. We have to be right. adults. Yeah. We have to be yeah. adults. And, and they didn't like to do super long tours. Either. They would go out and come back Very because smart. they had, they had yeah. families. <clears throat> and, um, but anyway, so there was, you know, so AC, they're touring with ACDC, and they're and <laughs> Rick said that they were they were touring like throughout the Midwest or something, and um, there was this lady who took a shine to him. Mm-hmm. She, he said something really gay, like she fancied me or something. That's right, like, yeah, that's it was how, something like that's that. how polite he was. And um, <laughs> so um, he was like, "Oh no, 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 thank you, like no, I'm sorry," <laughs> and. A couple of nights later, they're in St. Louis, and he's in his dressing room. He's just warming up. It's very chill, you know. And he says he hears a knock at the door, and um, he says he opens the door, and it's Bon Scott. And he comes shuffling in, and he's got one of his foot feet is all bandaged up and bloody. It's like stepped on a beer bottle, which is like totally Bon Scott. Um, and... So he, Rick says, I put out my hand. I was like, you know, we hadn't actually like hung out yet, mm-hmm. you know, on the tour. We were just kind of like, so I hung out. I put out my hand to you know, shake his hand. And he's like, I'm not going to shake your hand. I want to punch your fucking lights out. And <laughs> and he's like, whoa, whoa, what's going on? He's just, he said, I heard what you've been saying about my band. And um, and he's like, and so he says, when he said that, he says, he says, I could see through the door into the hallway that that woman was standing there. He's Bond's <laughs> girlfriend now. Nice. <clears throat> so he said, well, wait a minute, Bond, we got to talk. <laughs> you know? And then he, they explained the situation and it was, you know. They hugged. They hugged. Yeah. yeah they, we, they, 
Hug it yeah, out, man. bitch. They started making out. Actually, no. they, they started drinking. <laughs> that's probably more <laughs> so, accurate, actually. Yeah. And yeah, so. But that's funny. Yeah, it was, a, you, know, you know, so like, it was, it was, it's a funny story. And so I'm, I'm really interested to see this documentary. Yeah, um, me too. Uh, Rock and Roll Machine, because um, it's, you know, full length documentary and they're probably going to get into a lot of really cool stories. Um, <laughs> what is not a cool story, Lily? I can't wait. <laughs> is just, uh, you know, at the height of everything. So they're touring. Uh, they had released their greatest hits. So they're touring, and, and it's a sold out tour. Like every show is like, mm-hmm. people are packed and everything, 1980, 1988. And um, Rick just says, I'm not going to play anymore. Oh. I'm, I have to play. I'm done. I'm done. And he did say that he would play out, like they had a circuit of shows that they had to finish. So he said right. he would play, play it out. Do you, yeah. do you have something on this? I Listen, I read everything I had. Listen. Okay. Well, I don't <laughs> want to interrupt you. You have no, something no, no. to interject. You're fine. I will definitely interrupt but, you. Uh, so, so you're watching this documentary and they're all talking like they're bros. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? They're all, all, you know, you're ready for them to like at the end get together and all like, you know, go sit down and, you know, hang out or something. And they, all of a sudden, man, it takes a real fucking dark turn. Yeah. I mean, like really dark because Rick says he doesn't want to be in the band anymore. And well, the Gil and um, uh, Mike are now in a bad position because this is something people don't think about. That band is a business. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And as a business, you have obligations and you have creditors (laughs) and you have taxes due and you have payroll. And there's all kind of things that you've got a lot of people like looking at you going like, you got to take care of me now. Right. You got to take care of me. And he's just like going to leave after like the next six shows or something like that. So they're in a really bad freaking position. They, they do pull it together, but there's debts and stuff that have to be paid. And it turns into, it turns into like, you know, lo- they talk to each other through lawyers. It's uh, really sad. Right? We've talked about they that turned before. Into, yeah, they they about turned that, into yeah. Fleetwood Mac. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they just became Fleetwood Mac. It's, it, I mean, it was depressing. But Rick was saying he was really upset because, yeah, he finished out the tour, but he never got paid for, for it, right? So when I saw that in the documentary, I'm like, oh, that really sucks. But then they cut over to, uh, Gil. to Gil, and he's like, none of us got paid. We had bills to yeah, pay. Yeah, so now what? We had to, yeah, he goes, so, no, none of us got paid. I'm like, oh, okay. Um, right. So I don't want to character, and I think that the the presenters for this documentary were really trying to be careful do not to characterize one side over right. the other you know right. what i mean they, they just right. to show, yeah. here's what both people are saying and that's all we're going to do with that and i respected that about it um gil our uh, mike levine is um you could t- he's the guy who seems really emotionally affected by yeah. it like he seems like he really misses those guys him and gil are still involved they have a metal work studio mm-hmm. which everybody has p- recorded a yeah. ton they produced tons and tons of records out of there um it's one of like the like the top-notch studios i think in canada and um uh so they do they hang out they spend time together but you know you just got the impression that gil at that point was really sad about what happened um, and it became this like sue fest, like everybody sued everybody, <laughs> like you know, and it just was ugly. It just got really ugly. And it was it's yeah. sad. It's just really sad. Um, so the band tries to continue on. Okay, and here's the thing about here's the thing about Rick. Like it's okay. So he's an amazing guitar player. Okay, and he's fronting the band. So he's doing both of those things. So that is a giant hole to fill. I said hole. <laughs> that is a massive hole. Like, I, you I don't said know giant you, hole. I, I don't know what you do. I don't, yes. I don't, I don't know what you do with that. I, I, you don't know what to do? You don't know what to do with the I hole? I knew that was happening. Like, I mean, what, I mean, you know what I mean? Like, you know, what what kind of band? Can, how? I mean, there are only three people. You know what I mean? It's like... <laughs> right. it's, that's that's quite a chunk of person gone. Yeah, I mean it'd be like it'd be like if Eddie Van Halen and David Lee Roth left Van Halen at the same time. Well, there's that. Bye. <laughs> you know I mean, like like what's now? What's going to happen? So and Michael Anthony and Alex Van Halen decided they wanted to keep the band together. <laughs> well, that's kind of what that's kind of what yeah. it is. So they bring in this this kid who's also from uh, from Toronto. Ugh. 
And I cannot. What can you pronounce his name? Phil's oh, name. Oh my God! His no, that's like name. a Greek name. He has, he's, oh, wait, yeah, he's some. I don't have the full name. But Philex. Yeah, Phil Phil that's close. Everybody knows who. He's yeah. known most famously now as is Bon Jovi's guitarist. He replaced mm-hmm. um, Richie Sambora. So I love that guy. I love that guy. <laughs> I love that guy. I kind do. Of, I love Phil. Well, he'd if you want to, should we leave the room, Lily? In a yeah, we sort- should leave. No, I'll just go over here and take care of it. <laughs> no, it feels very cool. <sighs> All taken care of now? Zenitis. Oh, look at you. That Zinitis. is pretty good. Zinitis. Zinitis. Anyway, so w- he has, and it's it's not Z, it's not the Z sound with the Z, it's the Z sound with, with the an X. fucking X. X. Yeah. It's Phil X. That's how cool he so is. It's Phil fucking X. <laughs> uh, so, and... He's worked with some other people, but he replaced Rick Emmett for a while. And she, but he really could because he doesn't sing. So Gilmore right. sang to, on the yeah. did all the same. Now, what is so freaking interesting about Gilmore and um, Rick Emmett is like they're very kind of different. They're very different voices. And Gil does that straight up rock and roll. Like I kind of put his voice in a sort of like. Um, um, Joe Lynn Turner meets Lou Graham mm-hmm. kind of real classic rock and roll okay. yeah, kind yeah. of voice you know what I mean and he the songs that he sings um, uh, like uh, yeah. American Girls yeah. When the Lights Go Down Rock and Roll Machine you know those have that kind of rock and roll swagger uh-huh. he can you know he can do so they were I have not heard this album so I don't really know what else to say have you ever listened to it I have not Briefly today. Oh. I can't explain it. Though. You're better than we are. <laughs> Briefly. <laughs> at work. <laughs> yeah. So they so they so they did this in the nineties and um it, you know, it just wasn't gonna it just didn't work out. But in eleven the band reissued Allied Forces, as Lily said, and they did find a way eventually, and I w- this is what I think is gonna be talked about in the documentary. They just released a documentary in twenty twenty one, um, called Triumph, uh, Rock and Roll Machine and it was premiered at the um, Toronto International Film Festival, but it has that has not been anywhere else since. That's, that baffles me. It hasn't been anywhere since. Oh, come on, you know, all the streaming services have it as listed, but they don't have it. Mm-hmm. So, I I'm hoping that this is explored a little bit more, like how they reconcile with it. But it's one of those great stories, right? We all love a great story of like mm-hmm. these guys that get together and they and they, you know, kind of against all odds it became giant rock stars. I get I almost get punched out by Bond Scott. Like you know, they almost <laughs> like all this cool shit happens, right? You know what I mean? And then like boom, it all comes crashing down. But mm-hmm. then they find a way to like, you know, rise, rise like above a, it. Rise yeah. above it. I mean, they, to, yeah. to come back together and, and to do something. And they have been doing it for a while. So I don't think this is any kind of like begrudgingly done thing. Uh, Rick Emmett uh, had very six big success as a solo artist in mm-hmm. Canada. Um, uh, I thought, I think I'm not real nuts about his solo pop music, but the guitar music he's done, he's released uh, uh, flamenco albums. He's released jazz <laughs> albums. I would like, like to hear the flamenco. He, he, um, he's uh, like internationally known guitar teacher, um, what he wrote for a guitar guitar player mag yes, guitar I player remember magazine. Those articles. Yep. He was a satirical cartoonist for um, what? Hit Parader. What? Really? I didn't know that. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, he's really talented. Like he's got a lot going on. Um, uh, like the song. Okay, this this goes to show you. Like I, he's a kind. I think he might be kind of like a savant. Um, just real quick. I we're we're way long um but like for instance the song hold on mm-hmm. the beginning that oh you know something's at the edge of your mind and you don't right. know what that that was a poem he wrote in high school oh nice <laughs> in high school that's a poem he that's wrote in great. high school you know and he just put that music to it and like just you know and he said when he played it for the guys they were like yawn and uh, <laughs> he was like wait a minute guys give it a chance mm-hmm. it was gonna kick in and they liked it um, my, my poems in high school were, uh, dear so-and-so, you're in my top of the hits because you have really big... And I just... There I once was a man from Nantucket. I anyway. couldn't, fi- couldn't finish that. I couldn't, you couldn't figure out. You couldn't figure out what rhymes with, with that. With hits, yeah. So, um, you know. so um, <laughs> Kim Mitchell, I guess, teases Rick Emmett and tells him that like Elton John should sue him because at the beginning of this is the same melody and chord changes as 
your song. Oh. Well. <laughs> He's still, well. still waiting for oh, Elton Ken John Mitchell, to so silly. Um, he should go for a soda. They did... The, the, uh, well, if you've only heard the song on the radio, you have not heard it on the album... The album, the song, the usual version you hear in the studio, uh, and excuse me, on the radio, is a condensed version. It's the single version. This is something that was a feature, stuff in the 70s, that we just don't fucking get much mm-hmm. anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, so, of course, you wanted to get the album to hear the full version. Mm-hmm. And at that, in this time, a longer song in people's minds was like, better. <laughs> Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Did you ever hear the long version of Freebird? <laughs> <laughs> There's a long version. You, know? you can take a nap in the middle. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> but but anyway, so so on the album, it's it's different. There is a disco section. What? Oh. Yes. Uh, and it is very freaking cool. And what I thought were strings comes in at some point. It's not. Rick Emmett, what he called the wire choir. And I can't remember the producer he was working with. This guy had worked with, had just got done working with some other famous artists where they had done this. But what they did, Kevin, uh-huh. this is really interesting, was they just they layered guitars so much that like the the tack yeah. of the pick was had completely disappeared, and it just sounded oh. like uh, like a choir wow. almost singing, you know, or like a like a it's like a string wash on a synthesizer yeah, yeah. or something, and like it has all this really neat shit in it, um, and oh. that's like not on the most commonly heard version of it. So um so he was so I so th- that that's kind of interesting. I'm um, just really quickly, do you guys have some favorite songs you want to give a shout out about? I I was like you today when I was doing a little bit of research, I'm like, I forgot about this. I forgot how many songs they had <laughs> on the radio. I'm like it's kind of like Foreigner. You know, if you get like <laughs> Foreigner's greatest so hits, like the whole album is like they're all hits. Usually you'll have like, you know, so-and-so's greatest hits, one or two songs on there you're familiar with. The rest is feller. Yeah, and that's the way it is with Triumph, man. Like, uh, like So Crates. I'm like reading your list right now, so I'm kind of like being like Bill and Ted. You're cheating. Oh, uh, like So Crates and uh, <laughs> Neapolitan Era. and But like Fight the Good Fight, World of Fantasy, Magic song. Power. You know, we were talking about, uh, I'm not a big album fan, but I loved... Uh, Thunder Seven. I loved a Sport of Kings. I just I thought they were really well done, and those were a few of those albums. And I, there's not many in my life that I can actually listen to from start to finish. You got a favorite Triumph song? Though? Well, it's it's always laid on the line, but uh, fight the good fight. Mine are the Usuals because I heard the Usuals first, oh, but it's yeah. okay because those are good songs. That's no, a great song. <laughs> fight the good fight. I remember being really enamored with that song. Uh, written up somebody. I I'm not going to take the time to look up because we're really long on time. But there was some. That Rick knew about or was close to, who was fighting cancer, and mm. um, this is from the Bible. Fight the good fight is from the Book of Timothy. Right? Yes, um, Timothy. Timothy. You mispronounced. <laughs> <sighs> you got it, sister. And so, so it is about like you know, come on, you, know, you can do it. You got to. Mm-hmm. And this is the thing: like a lot of Triumph songs are kind of like. You know, sound like you know something could be played like at a Tony Robbins event. You know, what right, I mean? right, you know, very like, inspirational. <laughs> they right? are. They, they yeah. can be inspirational without being religious. <laughs> yes, <laughs> they can be inspirational yes. without being religious. I think that that I think that that is key. Uh, you said you like lay it on the line. Yes, of course. Uh, interesting. Like he, Rick said that he. This is a common theme in a lot of his songs he's written. Is this idea of like just tell me the truth. Yeah, and he says the song isn't necessarily about any like particular relationship, but it's just this idea of. Just tell me the truth. Yeah. Um, Current uh, situation for exa- me. Exactly. <laughs> and, and hold on. He was just, this is something too that songwriters, a lot of songwriters do. Paul McCartney talks about doing this. A lot of people write like this. Which just were, He was just singing like nonsense syllables over the, over the, okay. uh, and he says, and it just sounded like, oh, hold on. He's, I guess it's called hold on. Yeah, <laughs> I guess. You know, it's just called, I guess that's what it's going to be. Um, magic power, um, and that's going to be our lyrics with Ludini here in a minute. Um, right. Is there anything anything you guys want to add, add about Triumph before we? Because I have a couple funny facts. No, no. I'm I think we're to good. Check my notes. Hmm? No, I have nothing funny. I want this. I have one fact <laughs> okay. that I, what I haven't mentioned. This other stuff we talked about, um, but um, a, a number of years ago, I interviewed Paul Nelson. You guys know who Paul Nelson is. Paul Nelson is a, a Canadian 
uh, guitarist and and our and, and uh, musician. Uh, he's been the uh, music director for some for some really famous acts, including Johnny Winter, and oh, he fun. was the guy who was responsible for getting for getting Johnny away from his bad management. Johnny was practically dead. Like, I think Stu told me he went to see him, and he says he was like had to be led out on stage. He had to sit down. He was hunched over. Oh wow. And everything like he was just about dead, and like we were talking, we came back from the concerts. Like I, I probably saw him for the last time, Ooh. and then all of a sudden Johnny Winter has this resurgence. He wins a fucking Grammy and all kind of stuff. And he's like, and I and you see him on he releases a live DVD and he's rocking out and I'm like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> well, his management, this he had this bad manager who was stealing all his money and just keeping. Johnny on tons of drugs. Wow. And these drugs were highly addictive and really harmful. And what Paul and his team did was they broke open his pills and started putting less and less and less. Oh, and, okay. and for Christmas nice. one year, it's, it's in the movie. There's a documentary about it that he give, they give Johnny this present. He opens it up and it's empty. And he says, Johnny, for the past three months, you've been completely off of drugs. Wow. And, wow. and, 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 and it's everybody that's big. That. That's yeah. very cool. But anyway, so Paul, so Paul was that guy. Anyways, so <laughs> I'm interviewing Paul, and he, I'm like, "Hey, man, so I had to get started in Canada." Blah blah blah. He says, "Yeah." He says, "He says, he says I was in this band, and um, it was, you know, we we're all songwriters, and we shared. Uh, we we got a, we had a publishing deal. We got a publishing deal. I was like really excited, and um, the publishers really liked this one song, and they said that we you know we're gonna make this song a big hit. We're gonna give it the triumph, and I was like. Motherfucker of all bands, they s- and I was like, and I was because when he said they gave it to Triumph, I was about ready to say, "Oh, that's really cool," and I'm so glad I didn't because he went off oh boy. for like like two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> they're the fucking worst! Oh my oh god, my they're gosh. terrible! Wow! And I was like, I'm wow. just sitting here. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh boy. yeah, I couldn't wait to change that subject. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, it was like you know, the dude was like, he was not having. He was not, not having, having any of that. Any of that. That was not wow. going to happen, man. Like he just was like he fucking hated Triumph. I mean, it's just, so like, you it was so you didn't get weird. to talk about like, them that day. So. I I love Triumph. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm gonna I want to talk about real quick before we get out of here. We're gonna talk about um, before we get to what the Beatles did today. <laughs> um, let's talk about Magic Power because okay. that's what this podcast is all about. Magic Power is the magic power of music. That's the yes. ma- that is the magic power. Right on. <clears throat> Something's at the edge of your mind and you don't know what it is. Something you were hoping to find but you're not sure what it is. Then you hear the music and it all comes crystal clear. Music does the talking. It says the things you want to hear. That isn't that why we fucking this love music? This is my music? whole life. I mean, I what, well, I, we love music. See. I mean, he sums it up perfectly. Exactly. I'm young, I'm wild, and I'm free. Yes, got sir. the magic power of the music in me. Oh, I'm my. young, I'm wild, I'm free. I got the magic power of the music in me. Okay, so, and then th- this next verse is a kind of, kind of little, like a little vignette. It's like a little story. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. She climbs into bed. She pulls the covers overhead, and she turns her little radio on. She's had a rotten day, so she hopes the DJ is going to play her favorite song. Mm. It Mm. makes her feel much better, brings her closer to her dreams. A little magic power makes it better than it seems. I don't even know why they're singing about me, but that's fine. Exactly. But isn't that what music (laughs) does? Yes, it does. And and for those of you that don't know, there was a time like before the internet, (laughs) we had to turn the radio on. And you didn't, Right. you had to hope that the DJ would play that song you wanted to really wanted to hear. At like four in the morning. And then you could finally go to sleep. She's young, she's (laughs) wild now, she's free. Uh, She wants to be free. She gets the magic power of the music from me. She's young, she's wild now, she's free. She wants to be free. She gets the magic power of the music from me. So he kind of works himself into the song. He's like, I'm the... So what it is, it's a kind of dialogue. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then he they sort of like wrap it up here at the end. Uh, if you're thinking it's... Oh, here's the bridge. If you're thinking it's over, but you just can't short it out, do you want someone to tell you what they think it's all about? Are you the one and only who's sad and lonely reaching for the top? Well, the music keeps you going and it's never going to stop, never going to stop, never going to, never going to, never going to stop. And I don't know what else to say about that. It's never going to stop. <laughs> never. And here we go. Ever. He sort of wraps. He sort of brings the whole thing together here. The world is full of compromise and infinite red tape. But music's got the magic. It's your one chance mm-hmm. for escape. 
So turn me on, turn me up. It's your turn to dream. A little magic power makes it better than it seems. I'm young now, I'm wild, and I'm free. I got the magic power of the music in me. I'm, wa- I'm young now, I'm wild, and I'm free. I got the magic power of the music in me. And that's I don't my know. Shit right there. I, I remember hearing that song and going like, yeah. Yeah. That's it. That's why I love mm-hmm. music. Like you, you summed it up. That's me and Lily and all of us here. All and of probably us. anyone listening, guys probably <clears throat> out there. Do we have? Uh, so we're gonna move on real quick. Anybody have any? Uh, why don't you hit? Uh, we have some conversation before we do this. Um, nothing that applies. <laughs> <laughs> They're just talking amongst themselves. Yeah, sure. pretty They're going, much. When's Lou gonna <laughs> shut the fuck up? And let us talk. <laughs> Unless you have something on there that I can't see. Somebody says just chill and take him, take him in my That's favorite. our buddy Tom. Tom Blodgett. Oh, what's up, Tom? Yeah, yes. Faith community is That's in the Tom. house. Oh, That's wow. Tom. Yep. Yes, sir. Bill Damiano is the one that I was all, I was for almost five when MTV came out. You youngster. Uh, no, I was, in, I, was, I remember. I remember there was no MTV and then it was MTV. And like when MTV came out, man, it was like. Do you, have, do you get it? Do you guys get MTV? I know. And <laughs> find a friend like that had it. That was just like floating around. And mm-hmm. do, can we? Can, do you have MTV? <laughs> can I tell you something? I'm, I'm, uh, okay. I'm, if you insist, my I'm God. Gonna, real quick, it's a real podcast, quick. Not you're supposed gonna, to be talking I, or anything. I'm going to admit to breaking the law here. When when my neighbors had cable, but I didn't, and I wanted to watch MTV. You hooked up their cable. <laughs> I fucking spliced. You looked it. through their I window. Fucking, no, no, Lily. I'm not a. You pervert or I anything. know the pervert. But I did. I spliced into their their cable on the side of their house and ran awesome. a wire over, and I was able to watch it. You know what I remember first coming in was Def Leppard photograph. Nice. And Ow! there it is. Will Smith. <laughs> Will Smith, your yeah. ass on that yeah. bitch. I think the uh, the uh, what is it? The time of jurisdiction or whatever. It's run out, so it's I done. can't be persecuted. Time. That's fine. Persecuted fine. or prosecuted for that. Either or. The Either of the of, things. The statute of limitations. That, that's the time of jurisdiction. Yeah. Well, but you I, know what? It's kind of, that the time of jurisdiction is the kind of the same thing. It applies. Yeah, time is, same works. Yeah. But uh, yeah, the statute of limitations has <laughs> run out. Statute of limitations. Oh, you guys are so stealing funny. MTV from my next door neighbor. <laughs> I just need to go over to my friend's house. Let's okay. go ahead and yeah. uh, do what you guys happened? have any new? And, I have one. I have one. Go ahead. Go for it. Oh, do you guys remember the band Dishwalla? Yes, mm-hmm. from the nineties. So they're back. <laughs> um, they have a brand new EP out um, called Alive. Features three songs, yeah. uh, pondering themes of life, love, and loss. I actually don't hate it, surprisingly, wow. because it's very 90s. Um, I did interview the drum- uh, drummer, George Pendergast. It will be on the show next week, but I do recommend listening to it. It's um, it's very nostalgic. So um, might look The up. only song by them I ever knew was Counting, Counting Blue, Blue Cars. Cars. Right. That's what I bought for. the album for that song. Which you should, because it's a great song. Um, but, I, but I'm trying to remember now. Did I like the rest of it? I must Probably have. Not. I don't know because there's like I bought um, Fuel's album for one song and ended up falling in love with. Oh, that I love Fuel that. though. I played that album over and over. Um, my uh, new and notable yeah. is Blues Affied. Blues Affied by Anthony Gomes. Um, we did a podcast a few weeks ago about. Um, Blues guys that could be mm-hmm. ro- easily yeah, yeah, yeah. right, and Anthony's one of those guys. Oh. He's a very cool guy. I had him on the podcast a few years ago. Really, really, just a sweet dude. He, I did helped him do something. We did a, a charity thing together. Really awesome guy. Um, great, great guitar player. Great singer. Um, good stuff. So yeah, Bluesified is his new single, Bluesified. and I put a link to it in the show notes. You can watch it. Kevin, you got anything? Nope, not today. Okay, no problem. Put nothing. You're fucking fired. No, fucking fired. That's my new notables. Fucking fired. <laughs> um, be- That's all you know. Before we, um, yes, you're fired. <laughs> <laughs> I did the. Okay, I better not say the. the I better not say Donald Trump's name. Oh, now it's you politi- know, it's funny. Now it's like, a political d- show. D- oh, gee. If you say the, saying like Donald Trump is like saying the N word, right? You know, and people it have is the same like a thing. To, yeah. It's come on, calm down. <laughs> Everybody chill. Um, Simmer down now. Everybody must get stoned. Oh, boy. So before we get into this day and what the Beatles did, mm-hmm. I want to ask <laughs> this guy something. Go ahead, Lou. I'm watching. I'm asking guys a question. Okay. 
It's a fucking goddamn time Where have bomb. you been, Bones? Now we're almost done. He was upstairs with Stu. Jesus Christ. He was upstairs watching a Nazi documentary with Stu. With Stu. <laughs> No, Donald Trump was not in it. Oh, Might have been. Okay. Lord. Here we go. <laughs> you don't even know. No, I, Michael mm-hmm. Galtz, calm down. I can hear Michael Galtz getting upset already. <laughs> just, just not even watching today. Like, we're, just having, we're just playing. He's we're napping all, from the just, Motley Crue show yeah, still, there too. There you go. It, I thought he went to Billy Joel. He was also at Motley Crue. Wow. Oh, well, no wonder he's dead. <laughs> no wonder he did. Re, God, rest, re, God rest in peace. God rest ye <laughs> merry gentlemen. Oh, boy. That's what I meant to say. <laughs> <laughs> we are a bunch of merry gentle people. 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 <laughs> gentle persons. Gentle non gender. That's enough of that. Pacific? Non gender. I heard somebody like who should have like like given like a real talk. Like somebody who should have known better say Pacific <laughs> instead of specific. I'm like, like I don't know why Did I'm you like yell at them? that. Like, but this person was like a serious person. They were, yeah. that was like, I was on a video or something. I'm like, oh, he said Pacific. Oh my gosh. Opposed to? Opposed he didn't to. know what he was supposed to do. He didn't do. know what he was supposed to do. No. So let me ask these guys this. All right, go ahead. Okay, you know how... Lily, just try to put up with the nerd stuff for just a second just because a you're going to be able to Come relate. On. Okay, and here's... No, I won't use a nerd thing. <laughs> Halloween, the, the the movie, that's a franchise, right? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Right? And yeah. so they get different actors and stuff, right? Right, yeah. right, right. right. Yeah. Star Wars, Kevin, right? That's a sure. franchise. It's a franchise, you know what Lily. I mean? different it's actors, okay. They help, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. What about bands as franchises? What? I don't know how I feel... Because Gene Simmons already said that, like, oh no, like intimated that, like, there could be a kiss without any people from Kiss. They would just be, they would be in the makeup. There'd be younger guys who, you know, could sing the songs and everything the way they did them. (sighs) Hey, Lou, there already is a little. uh, There's another kiss. Little kiss. Little kiss. Just quit. (laughs) I'm leaving. I spit blood. Great. But only two ounces. <laughs> no midgets were offended in the making of this podcast. Hey, no. hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Pretty sure they call them Excuse little me. people now. <laughs> Don't use the M word. <laughs> we're little kiss. <laughs> little kiss, little kiss, let me in. So, I mean, what do you guys think about that? Like, let's stop. I mean, no. I'll, I'll just no. 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 Aside. no. 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 Well, I think we because like I found out what's going on with Foreigner and Mick Jones. What's he? He's what's he? What's going on with? He's like, yeah, he's technically in the band, right? But he just he comes out like an hour into the show, mm-hmm. and nobody knows who he is. It's like a nothing. <laughs> it's a giant nothing. Wrong. You know, people don't know that like nobody. Basically, they're listening to a tribute act for almost the whole night. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and they're calling it fucking Foreigner. Yeah. No. I'm sorry. Look, man. Nine, nine, nine. I know Foreigner is not like the height of great rock or something like that. I mean, they did a lot of pop hits or whatever. Sure. But, but they on. don't fucking deserve that. I, it's, I'm sorry. It's they not don't for deserve me. that. Like, that's it's not like, for me. That's no. like, that, you're kind of like, no. you know. Like, there are a few bands that I'll give a pass to. So, obviously, like, Warrant isn't really like a thing anymore. I'll go see them just for fun. But Kiss can't do this. It, it won't Kiss work can't, for me. We, uh, it won't work for you, but I bet it's going to work for people. It will definitely work. People don't care. People don't know. They want the freaking like, like badge of honor that I saw. Yeah, dude, I saw a kiss. No, you didn't. No, you actually did no, not. You actually didn't. I mean, technically, I really haven't either. So I saw know, Ronnie but... James Dio. It was on a fucking video. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, just, that's probably just, the funniest thing I said all day, and it's not even funny. Just say no to franchise. Uh, yeah, so like, I don't know what you guys think about that. Like, no. so rock the bands no. could be franchises. Um, Listen, I don't need any McDonald's bands out there. That's fine. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of kind right? of what it is. Because well, see, all these guys have sold off their publishing. I know. So mm-hmm. they don't even own that music anymore. So could somebody say, well, you know, we own uh, we own the Kiss catalog, so we're gonna do what we want. We're gonna we're gonna pay four guys to put the stuff on and, you know, go out and do the thing. Well, pay me to just dress up like Kiss and I'll lip sync. What the hell's the difference? Yeah. I'll have boobs. That's the difference. Oh, my. <laughs> it's an interesting idea. Um, I did not wow. I did not come up with that idea. I started, I've subscribed to a YouTube channel, Michael Nolan. Um, 
Michael aggravates the shit out of me because he keeps sp- <laughs> spreading the rumor that Bruce Springsteen tickets are five thousand dollars. They're, hey, no, they're, not. they're not five thousand dollars. They're not five thousand dollars. He's not, he's wrong crazy. about no. that. But his channel is very interesting. I encourage you to check him out. He gives thought provoking ideas, and he's very knowledgeable about classic rock. He's a he's a he's probably main. I think he might be. Few years older than you and I. Kevin. Oh, really? He's probably in his mid sixties. Oh my gosh, he's, he's ancient to me. He's so he senile. knows. So he, but he, he saw yeah. like the Beatles and Ed Sullivan kind of guy. He's that. Wow. He's at that era. All right. All right. Um, so. And uh, <clears throat> he brings up some good points and stuff like that. It's very interesting. So that was kind of inspired me to kind of bring that up. Let's talk about today. I saw one in there that I want to read. Okay. Oh. Oh, here we go. Okay. So <laughs> everybody, calm down for a second. We have to like. Um, no, we're not even going to. No. Know. There's too many things going on. <laughs> come we're not on. We time get to play come on. sound come bites. On. We don't yeah. have time. We're like, we're like four hours mean, in. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> in 1955, the king of rock and roll attended a meeting in Memphis with his manager, Bob Neal, Colonel Tom Parker, and Vernon Presley, Colonel. in which a new contract was signed that named Colonel Parker as special advisor. Mm. With control of virtually every aspect of Elvis's career, Parker was not really a colonel at all, but a Dutch what? immigrant named Andreas Cornelius van Kujik, Kujik whose honorary title was given Kujik, him in 1948 by Governor Jimmy Davis of Louisiana. This was a um, you could become a colonel. There were people that were like Kentucky colonels. There were genuine Kentucky colonels. That's huh. I know that's funny, but the colonel was a colonel. Um, were they fried? I don't completely understand. Were they fried colonels? <laughs> Kentucky fried colonels? He was a flamboyant promoter. What's the matter, Colonel per- Sanders? Chicken? <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> wow. Wow. No, sorry about that. That's where I was you going with it, so too. You have sorry. to leave. <laughs> Bye. Get the fuck <laughs> off my goddamn podcast with that horse shit. <laughs> That's where I was going with it, too. So. You know Colonel Angus? <laughs> <laughs> and again I say so, oh, come on come on come on back to the day the day oh, Lord. okay so what I want to say about this real quick is um <laughs> what all right okay <laughs> it's not that fun never mind I'm fine I'm done, I'm done, I'm done, I'm done. I'm going to pee my pants. Sorry about that. Barbara Streisand wanted Elvis as the lead in Star is Born, but but Uh Colonel Tom Parker would not even allow her to speak to him about it. That's all I want to say is about the control. All right, that's good. Elvis Presley started a five-week run at number one on the U.S. singles charts with It's Now or Never on this day in 1960. Okay, yes, it was the version of O Solo Mio. It was an old Italian song. Oh yeah! Good. So, did you guys didn't know that he ripped off Osola Mio? I don't. Well, I wasn't paying attention. Oh, Mio! It's something like that. It's now. You read this one. Never. That's, that's read exactly this one. it. That's what it is. Oh, on this day, I'm nineteen. Playing. What are you saying? Like this year, on this day, nineteen sixty-five, Beatles set a new world record for the long largest attendance at a pop concert when they played in front of. Listen to this. 55,600 fans at Shea Stadium in New York City. Right on. The Beatles were paid $160,000 for the show. That's a bazillion gazillion. To, to okay, wait a minute, wait a minute. Stop, stop right what? there. What you happened? have to stop. What? You start out with a British what? accent. What? Now you're doing what? like an African-American from the South. He doesn't I'm even not. know what's going on. Yes, you I'm are. not Colonel Angus. Anyway, the Beatles were paid $160,000. You like that, Lily? Lily gets it. I know what you're Lily saying. Lily gets it. I get it. Colonel Angus, Cunnilingus. I get what? it. Why well, was born f- yesterday? I can't even. Colonel, what? No, Angus. Like the Angus. Ba- what are you, co- Lou? All right, anyway. The Beatles were paid $160,000 for this show. The set list included Twist and Shout, She's a Woman, I Feel Fine, Dizzy Miss Lizzie, Ticket to Ride. Can't, why do I have to read the entire You don't. Just say what's next. Yeah, you don't have to say any of that shit. Just say what nah, they did. There you go. Calm down. Colonel. I'm not reading it. Well, say, come on. 66 The Beatles during the U.S. tour. The Beatles appeared at the D.C. Stadium in Washington, D.C. to over 32,000 fans. Tickets cost $3. Three whole dollars. Five members of the KKK, led by the Imperial Wizard of Maryland, picketed the concert. <laughs> Five KKK wow. guys with any other. That's fucking hilarious. <laughs> 
67, the year I was born is a good year, Hendrix Experience played a one-night-only show at the Fifth Dimension Club. Wow. Uh, again, like, like I mean, Riveting. I love Hendrix, but I don't really see the significance. Riveting. Who's going to talk about 1969, dudes? Led Zeppelin, doing a North American tour. <laughs> We've gone way too long. Can I ask you a question? Go no. Ahead. <laughs> Go ahead. Fin- <laughs> just finish. <laughs> I don't know if I can. I can't see. My eyes are tearing up. During an North American tour, Led Zeppelin appeared at the Hemisphere Arena in San Antonio. Okay, that's enough. <laughs> I'm done. On this day in 1969, Woodstock Festival was held at Max Yasker's. 600-acre farm uh-huh. uh, in Bethel, outside of New York. Yeah. 400,000 people. That, this is like one of the things, right, Kevin? They weren't expecting. No, all these people There was not up, enough shitters. Right? Yep. They, <laughs> yeah, so people were shitting <clears throat> where, where they always they shat. shit. Mm-hmm. Lily? 76, ABBA released Dancing Queen as the lead uh, single from their fourth studio yes. album, Arrival. Dancing Queen went Great to the, song. on to top the charts in more than a dozen countries, including the U.S. Wow. It became ABBA's only number one. This is the original tag. This is originally yeah. the. This is the original dancing riff to Dancing Queen. Queen <laughs> dancing Queen. Anyway. <laughs> originally the title of Boog- Boogaloo. What? It's Boogaloo. <laughs> Yo, man, it's Electric Boogaloo. <laughs> Two. <laughs> the futuristic satire film America Thon. America Wow. Premiered in Los Angeles featuring Meatloaf on this day. Very good. I never heard of it. Although now I'm curious, I might have to go find it. I vaguely it. remember that. I never saw it though. Diana Ross and Lionel Richie started a oh, nine-week yes. run at number one in the U.S. singles charts with "Endless Love." This song was inescapable. Yes, nice. It was. Oh, go ahead. I mean, it was like right, right. Uh-huh. This was yeah. from the movie with Brooke Shields. Yes. And this song was like, I was so sick of the song. I was like, shut the fuck up already. Oh, yeah, right. But it was a good year. That was uh, 1981. That, that was the year that uh, yes. it started off good with the right person being born. Aww. Born. Well, it ended good. Oh, it ended good. You were born. <laughs> you were born. <laughs> uh, my main man, Michael Jackson, 1987. <laughs> uh, UK Third UK number one with I Just Can't Stop Loving You duet with uh, Sieta Garrett. Who? Uh, I don't know. Mm-hmm. 1991, Paul Simon played a free concert in New York Central That's Park before for an him. audience of blah, 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 blah. Okay. <laughs> Three quarters of a million people. <laughs> and 1992 on this day, In, Ec- in Excess, or In Excess, oh, In Excess, excess went to number one the UK album chart with their Welcome to Whoever You Are, their first UK number one album. Yeah. I love that band, man. I'm just, but that's a band that like, that's just a shame. Uh, Vince, there, there you are. There we go. Lily, nice. chime in. On <clears throat> but this is sad. Uh, 1995, oh, Vince Neil's yeah. daughter Skylar Neal died of cancer at the age of four. The Motley Crue singer later founded the Skylar Neal Memorial Fund in her honor. Since that time, Neal and the foundation have raised awareness and funding for various children's illnesses and has donated millions of dollars to the T.J. Martel Foundation and it sponsors an annual golf tournament to raise money for children with cancer. Hmm. Interesting. Yes. Oh, U2's hotel burnt down this day in 1995. Oh, what a goddamn shame. Uh, David Bowie in Amman had a baby this day in 2000. And John Lennon Memorial was unveiled in the remote Scottish village of Durness. Yeah. Oh, he spent his childhood there. I did not know that. I'm going like, that's very bizarre. That's some strange place. (laughs) Charlie Watts passed away. In 04. What? Oh, no, he's being was, treated. Was no, being I was going to say, no, 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 no. Not that long ago. No. Yeah, not that long ago. Treated. Oh, John Lemon again. We're done with John Lemon. Jerry Wexler, who is a really famous uh, producer and engineer, uh, started the careers of Urethra Franklin, Ray Charles, and Bob Dylan. <laughs> say Dylan. that. Died at the age of 91 on this day in 2008. Wow. Okay. Nobody gives so a shit about the birthdays. Say. We have to show a few birth birth. A couple birthdays and then. We'll leave you guys alone. Leon Theremin, Kevin. You know who the that is? The guy who made the... Yeah. 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 Happy Floyd birthday. Floyd Ashman. The guy from who the made Thames. the... Ashman. What kind of fool do you think I am? Well. Bill Pinckney. That's stupid from the last Drifters. Name. Oh, all right. Happy birthday. Bobby Helms. American country music singer. Best known for his hit, Jingle Bell Rock. Well, how about that? Sticks Nesbert Hooper. Sticks. 1938. 
from the Crusaders. Mm -hmm. Don Rich, country musician who helped develop the Bakersfield sound. Oh. Happy birthday. Pete York, Spencer Davis Group. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Jimmy Webb. Oh, oh Jimmy. I love Jimmy Webb. Jimmy. John Glenn, John Clannon, John Clannon. Uh, Glenn Can Glenn Cannon. Glenn Campbell. <sighs> Glenn Cannon? <laughs> wow. I'm just fucking with Lily. <laughs> oh, come Lil, on. Lil, 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 Lil. <laughs> yeah, love Jimmy Webb. There you go. Here's one I know. Tom Johnston from the Doobies. Yeah. Tommy Aldridge, another one I know. Amazing uh, drummer and, and hot, 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 white, hot, hot. white snake. White snake. <clears throat> Billy Griffin, best known for replacing Billy Smokey Griffin. Robinson, lead singer of the Miracles. Uh, Matt Johnson, a lot of Johnsons today. From the the. <laughs> Marshall Schofield. <laughs> Shut up, Lily. No. Lily. There's a ghost in my pants. <laughs> <laughs> it's the Johnson Brothers. Mike, the ghost Mike, in my pants. Mike, Mike, Mike Graham. Yeah. Who is the singer from uh, My Boy Zone? I don't even Your know boy what's zone. going on right now. This is My Boy Zone. Simon right here. Dawbarn, who sang the song. Stop. Don't touch me there. Stop. Don't touch me there. That's My Boy Zone. <sighs> Tim Foreman was a bassist for the band Bigfoot. Switch That's Switch their big hit was Sasquatch. <laughs> Same Squam. <laughs> David Welsh was a guitarist yes. from oh, yeah. Welshland. Of the fray. Welshland. And he was, uh, he We're was, a lot thinking. of people don't know this about David Welsh, Kevin. Yeah. Well, tell me, he talk to me, He was a hobbit. No way. Yes. Wow. I learned so much from this. this Ted podcast. Dwayne. Yeah, Dwayne's Wayne. Ted Dwayne. Yeah. Was originally yes. Ted Dwan. No way. Yes. The things I learn here. Yes. Ted Dwayne, happy birthday. Nipsey Hustle. So, Lily, do your Nipsey Hustle. Hustle. Um, on occasion, for sure. Nipsey Hustle. It all depends on my mood, really. Oh. That sounded like a fart. I'm sorry. The Nipsey Hustles. The Nipsey Hustles. And Joe Jonas. Oh, fuck Nobody him. cares about that guy. Fuck him. I'm sorry. Was that the, my inside I, um, voice? Joe Jonas is my personal hero. No, it's I'll bet. Yeah, James get off Fett. my Don't, lawn. No, let's, we're going to get off your lawn and get the hell out of here. Guys, <laughs> thanks for right. hanging out. Ludini Rock and Roll Circus dot com. Sorry about uh, the sorry, thing. sorry about how long we went. I apologize. We just look at this way. You got more for your money. Yeah. Wow. You got more Lily. Oh, thank God. It's all about the Lily. It sure is. You got more time. With Some Lily. days. <laughs> Some days. Go to Wolf's Customs. Check them out for uh, great, um, uh, amazing artwork. Ask them if they can do something like this. Oh, on the guitar. Put, yeah. The Triumph, uh, Just a Game Album. What a yeah. what a great album. Uh, if you guys haven't listened to Triumph, I'll go check them out. Uh, Lily, what do you got going on? Um, I have no idea what's going on this weekend because my brain is broken. However, Thursday, uh, you have Hot Licks with Lily Six on Rock Rage Hot Radio. Licks, Hot Licks, oh, I'm going to Cedar Point this weekend. I will be out of commission. Um, oh, so God. Cedar Point, that's where the what is? What's in Cedar Point? Where the fun is that where the fun is? It's the, roller, it's, it's the roller coast. I think that's where the fun is. <laughs> uh, anyway, 6 p.m. Eastern time for my show. <laughs> no, I, I don't know if I'm having the dish wall interview this week or next week, so okay. just stay tuned for that's that. That's right. Your brain's broken. Dish it is. We broke it for you real yeah, good. It is. It's uh, done. It's right, Kevin. Anything you'd like to add before Yeah, hey, we... I'm going down to DMV more, get my picture taken. So all Yin's people won't come down and hang out with me. Please feel free to. All right, guys. You guys have a wonderful uh, week. We'll catch. Oh, real quick. Next week, we're going to yes. do something super fun. I won't be here. Uh, I'll be here. Yeah, I got to talk to Angelina about that. But we're going to be talking about. Um, if not, I'll just. You know, you know some of these sexier. guys, you know, 10 artists who might want to think about hanging it up. Retirement. I'll be really sexy next week. Make up for Lily not being Fill here. Fill balloons so with please. pudding. Oh, yeah. You guys have a great week. And this is Katie Simone <laughs> singing with my band. You guys oh, have I a great you. week. Catch you on the next Ludini Rock and Roll Circus. Yeah.